the Canadian Hockey League on Rogers Sportsnet. Hockey that matters. Fitting that the ADT Canada-Russia Challenge would wind up in a great junior hockey city of Kamloops. And the first five games of this set have produced plenty of excitement. Towards O'Meara, hits Little in front, Little, he scores! Brian Little hits second of the challenge. James Neal at the Plymouth Whalers, crushing it. Victor Tikhanov, great burst, today, another terrific stop by Priscilla Kapu. As a veto, and that's a nice save. Today, breaking in, and there'll be another penalty. Riendo, that is Absolutely a spectacular kick save. Drzenovic, holding, holding in front, scores! Devin Saguti! The CHL on Rogers Sportsnet. Welcome inside the Interior Saving Center in Kamloops, British Columbia, where we will put a wrap on this year's edition of the ADT Canada Russia Challenge. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Peter Lubardius alongside Sam Cosentino. And Sam, I think somewhat fitting that, to a certain degree, save some of the best players for last. And there's no doubt one of the best in the country on defense, we both think, is a member of the Vancouver Giants in Cody Francis. Well, this guy's unbelievable, and I think he's a real steal for Nashville in the third round of the 2005 draft. They've done a great job at drafting young defensemen. Two things you'll notice about this guy, his skating ability is outstanding. And the first pass out of his own zone may be the best across the country for any defenseman in junior hockey. Carey Price is a goaltender that has all the tools, a great skill set. Is he ready to carry the load for his country in sweep? Well, he does have some international experience, and that will bode well for him. He does have the entire skill set, Peter, and he's just the third goaltender in the WHL to be taken in the top five. Ray Stasiak back in 1970, John Davidson out of Calgary in 1973. Still some decisions left to be made for Jim Hammett and the Hockey Canada scouting staff. These two members of the Prince George Cougars didn't hurt their chances of receiving an invite one night ago in Chilliwack. They sure did not. The two of them combined for three of the five goals scored by the Western Hockey League in last night's game. Both of them are draft picks of the San Jose Sharks in the first round. Arguably the best defenseman in the game last night was Wishart. You could say the same thing about Sataguchi up front. Well, one gentleman who never hurts our chances of having a good show joins us once again as we send it down to Mr. Louis Jean-Louis. Peter Curtis Hunt is the rookie on the Team Canada coaching staff but uh, he's had tremendous success in the under 18 program over the course of the last couple of years. How invaluable has that experience been as you get set to take on a new role with Team Canada. Well there's a there's a couple areas I think the the most important area is, is understanding the kids that are here or the kids that we had at the under 18 program and you know the better you know your kids and understand them their strengths and weaknesses I think the better we're able to help them and coach them as individuals as well as the team the second is just getting them through the adversities the travel the food uh, the time change and all the little things that come up uh, the lack of crowds and some of the games will be at and, and certainly some of the facilities so you know hopefully I can uh, you know be an asset in that regard. How close are you right now in terms of drawing out a list for the invitees on Monday and is there a lot of debate going on. Well we've been in touch uh, the three coaches with uh, Jimmy Hammett throughout this entire process as well as his tours throughout the CHL and uh, I'd say we're really close right now uh, we had a chance to talk this morning obviously we'll talk again after this game and uh, it's going to be an exciting day on uh, Monday when we announce. Peter uh, that's uh, it from the ice level now let's have the uh, back upstairs to you and Sam. Louie thanks so much time to meet the starting lineups of this final game of the challenge and the dignitaries with the public address announcer here in Kamloops Mr. Paul Mickey Owen. Good evening ladies and gentlemen boys and girls this is Paul McKeown your ringside announcer the Canadian Hockey League and the Western Hockey League in association with your Kamloops Blazers welcome you to the 2006 ADT Canada Russia Challenge.
lineup for tonight's visiting team, the Russian Selects. In goal, number one, Ilya Proskuryakov. The forwards on left wing, number 23, Andre Kiryokin. On right wing, number 21, Alexei Shvalev. And at center, number 18, Alexander Kulyanin. On defense, number seven, Stanislav Romanov. And number nine, Dmitry Zuzin. The coaching staff for Team Russia, the head coach, Evgeny Popikinin. The assistant coach, Vladimir Popov. The general manager, Alexei Koshetkov. The team doctor, Alexander Borodin. The team trainer, Vladimir Belyakov. And equipment manager, Igor Popkov. And now, let's meet tonight's lineup for the home team, Team WHL. In goal from the Tri City Americans, number one, Kerry Price. On defense, from the Seattle Thunderbirds, number three, Scott Jackson. At right wing, from the Everett Silvertips, number eight, Zach Hamill. Playing center, number 10, from the Kamloops Blazers, Brock Nixon. On left wing, from the Kootenai Ice, Number 19, Ben Maxwell. And on defense, from the Kamloops Blazers, number 25, Keaton Allenby. The coaching staff for Team WHL, the head coach from the Medicine Hat Tigers, Willie Desjardins. The assistant coaches, from the Regina Pats, Curtis Hunt, and from the Vancouver Giants, Don Hay. The team trainer from the Kamloops Blazers, Colin Toledo Robinson. And the assistant trainer from your Kamloops Blazers, Greg Spike Wallace. Tonight's officials are referees Kyle Raymond and Pat Smith. The linesmen are Kyle Murchison and Brandon Lefke. Ladies and gentlemen, at center ice, please welcome our official party for tonight's opening ceremonies. Mr. Murray Owen, governor of the Kamloops Blazers. Mr. Ron Robison, the Vice President of the Canadian Hockey League and the Commissioner of the Western Hockey League. <laughs> Representing ADT, the title sponsor of the 2006 ADT Canada-Russia Challenge, Mr. Michael Collins. He is one of the best defensemen to ever wear a Kamloops Blazers uniform. He is the Blazers' all-time leading scorer among defensemen and is second overall in all-time team scoring. He led Canada to a gold medal at the 1988 World Junior Championship in Moscow and played 12 seasons in the NHL. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Team WHL Honorary Captain and former Blazer defenseman, Greg Hogger! We ask that the captains now please come to center ice for the ceremonial face-off. We will drop the puck for real when we return to Kamloops. Right after this, as this challenge comes to a close. Hi everybody, Mike Brophy, Greg Ross here in the Sportsnet studios. We'll get you back to Kamloops for the puck drop. 
of this sixth and final game in the ATT, ADT Canada Russia Challenge. And big story for Alexander Provkin, adding some muscle to that Russian team, getting the call. The 17 year old facing his coach and the star on his team in Medicine Hat. Well, he knows what he's up against because he's played in the Western League, so he knows the players to look out for. It's going to be a tough game. Let's send it back to Kamloops. Thank you very much, gentlemen. It's the sixth and final game of the ADT Canada Russia Challenge here in Kamloops, British Columbia. 5 and 0 oh are the young men from Canada. As our starting goaltenders are brought to you by ADT. Always there, making his fifth appearance for the Russians is their 19 year old netminder, Ilya Praskirikov. He turned aside 32 shots in a loss on Monday in Oshawa. And our first look in this series, his second appearance in the Canada Russia Challenge, the 19 year old member of the Tri City Americans. Gary Price, who's a first round selection of the Montreal Canadiens, fifth overall in 2005. Our referees are Kyle Raymond and Pat Smith. The linesman, Keel Murchison and Brandon Lifke. Western Hockey League starts the line of Kootenays, Ben Maxwell, Zach Hamill and Everett. And a newcomer, one of many on Team Western Hockey League tonight, a member of the hometown Kamloops Blazers, Brock Nixon. Here's a chance for the Russians developing early. Kerry Oaken putting Kerry Price to the test, and he comes across in a hurry. The Russians had one shot in about the first 24 minutes of last night's game in Chilliwack. Sam, it didn't take them long tonight and for he, a good chance. And even that one, Peter, you could have questioned whether or not you could have counted it as a shot on goal, but there was no doubt about that one. Ty Wishart, a pair of goals one night ago in Chilliwack. Turns it over. Here's Igor Milazoto. Has two assists in back to back games in this series. Ryan Russell chops it up. And it's just offside at the line. Peter, you talked about that chance that the Russian selects get right off the hop, and it's a good pass by Susan. He has that look up, throws a backhand over, and then it's Milovzorov who gets it. At the side of the net, Kuryokin is there, but that extra pass over allowed Price to get time to read and then react. Kept that pad to the ice, made a nice stop. Five newcomers on the ice right now for the Western League. Igor Zubov. Watched closely by one of four Vancouver Giants in the game, number 15, Spencer Mahacha. Cody Franson of the Giants, he leads the Western Hockey League Blue Liners in scoring with 34 points. And keep an eye on number six in this game. The keys to the game are brought to you by Yamaha. They are the manufacturers of the world's finest recreational vehicles. Well, for the Russian selects, they do get a reprieve with Alexander Provkin in the lineup to give him that 15th skater, but they are tired. This is the end of the series, and this is a, a fresh and well-rested WHL team. They need to finish strong here in this game. They have a few guys that still have yet to make an impression, and all of the decisions as far as the invites to camp have not been made yet. Now the Russians back to 15 skaters tonight as Darren Helm of the Medicine Hat Tigers loses an edge before J.D. Watt of the Vancouver Giants punishes his man on the end boards. And on the ice wearing number 13 for the Russians is a member of the Medicine Hat Tigers, Alexander Protkin. He's just 17 years of age. It's Nikita Mikno shovels it deep. Scott Jackson from Salmon Arm, British Columbia. And Darren Helm, nice right wing feed for J.D. Watt. Watt teed it up, blocked by Alexei Chevelle. One thing about Watt, you know he can fire, so to get in the way of that shot, takes a little intestinal fortitude. And just 2.07 into the opening period, we have our first penalty call. It's a holding infraction. Chevelle will go to the box for the hold, and for the Russian selects, not a situation you want to find yourself in, especially now with the guys who have played together here over the last night and the first period here, Maxwell Hamill out there on the power play, along with Brock Nixon, the newcomer in tonight's game. Hamill scored one of the goals in a 5-3 victory one night ago. Francis Hamill down low intended for Maxwell off the skate of Zuba. Vancouver's Brendan Nicholson, Brock Nixon of Hamlet's a good opportunity. His first international appearance. And Franson misses Mickelson with a pass, and that's rare for number six, who passes the puck so well like that. Nixon 
drops it for Hamill. A backhander through the legs. Off the side of the net and then clear the length of the ice. Both teams making changes in the specialty team scenario. Here's Franson. Plays it to Jackson who steers it deep. This is Provkin and the Medicine Hat Tiger. Good speed as he raced behind the net and found an opening. Good urgency on the part of the Russian selects to get it down in a hurry. The first opportunity they have. Nick Prezenovic, a St. Louis draft pick and a member of the Prince George Cougars. Chopped down and that will produce a penalty as well. Good chance for Brock Nixon here, the Kamloops Blazers, on this laser pass from Mickelson down low. Look at that seam wide open, and Nixon takes it and delivers it to the net, but the shot is low, and I don't think he got it all, Peter. It started to go up on end at the last second, and then you look at the penalty here as Drazinovic is taken down to the ice. And so this will be a five on three situation for a short period of time here, Peter, and we saw that work pretty well for the WHL All-Stars last night. Brendan Mickelson, a good low drive from the product of St. Albert. Here he comes again. Mickelson, wrist shot, nice diving play by Zubov to fall in front of it. Mickelson, Francis, relays it quickly. Mickelson, high slot. Mahachek, his Vancouver mate, was in front as Brody Dupont of Calgary tracked it down, wearing number nine. Mickelson. Thought about shooting down low. Ryan White in front from a hot check. And Bruskirikov was there. And Zuzan dumps it to neutralize. Chevelle have a bug to come back on the ice surface. The penalty time for some reason right now not posted on the score clock here in Kamloops. And Chevelle indeed has come up. So the Russians are just one man short. One minute left in it. Taylor Ellington of the Everett Silvertips carries in. Propkin to the puck. Look out. As J.D. Watt, a physical force, took a run at him, and he's already been involved physically. Well, you can see he can shoot the puck. You know he's a big body guy who really got in better shape this offseason. Here's the Calgary Flame draft pick. Trying to dish it off. Osipov was in the way, and Milav Zorin trying to spring Shapachev. Shapachev has four goals. And has worked well with Milad Zorov and Kazianov, who's in the penalty box. Zach Boychuk for Medicine Hat, Darren Hill. He's a good two-way player that can do it any way you'd like, and it's offside at the line. Peter, we had a chance to visit with J.D. Watt before this game, got to know him a little bit in the Memorial Cup last year. And one of the things the Calgary Flames wanted him to do was lose some of the body fat off his body. They felt that he could drop a few pounds and become quicker and a little more agile as a result. So he dedicated himself this summer to working out two hours a day starting at 8 o'clock in the morning. Sometimes the workouts would extend into that two and a half hour range. We know he can shoot the puck. We know he's a big body guy who likes to play physical, but it's that extra speed that he's going to need. And especially in this type of event where you're being looked at to play on a larger ice surface, that will serve him well. J.D. Watt scored eight goals all of last season. He has 16 already this year for the Vancouver Giants. Whatever Don Hay does, he seems to find guys that when some players graduate, other guys on his team have the ability to step up. Cody Franson on defense is a great example of that. J.D. Watt, another great example up front. A mold that Don Hay and the Kamloops Blazers used for years. How about making it to at least the Western Hockey League Final Four for 14 years in a row? That's what the Blazers did in the 80s and 90s. Kaziana might have a breakaway if the puck ever gets to him. It's partial, and Price comes well out to cut down the angle and make a good save. Not enough mustard on this pass from the back end, and Kazianov has a chance coming out of the box, and you'll see this pass just can't get there in time. As Zachapenko goes to the backhand, he can't get anything on it. That puck is behind him when he starts the pass. Had he been able to hit Kazianov in stride, that might have been a, a much better opportunity for the Russian selects. Having said that, Carey Price was able to come out there knowing that Kazianov wasn't coming in with a full head of steam. Credit the Russians, they kill off the two-man disadvantage. Kitty Okin, the captain, took over the reins from Zubarev in game four of this series. But Zuzin nearly dangled his way in home free. This will slide right to Kraskirikov, he's forced to play. 
Igor Zuba for Alexander Kalyanin. There's Ryan Russell, the twin brother of Medicine Hat defender Chris Russell in his second straight game. Susan springs Kiriokin. He'll shoot it and score. Kiriokin from what didn't look to be a very good angle beats Carey Price and the Russians strike first. Well, that's a goal that even Carey Price will tell you should not have been allowed. There's only one player to pay attention to and that's Kiriokin here. There's an angle there by France and he cuts down that angle and sends Karaoke further into the corner making this even more of a bad angle shot but somehow he finds its way past Carey Price. I mean Price is out there he's in position he's way out in front of that blue ice and that goal simply slides through him. Andre Kiriokin with his third of the challenge he's one of the players in this series for the Russians who I think has an Excellent opportunity to represent his country come Boxing Day. And I think, Peter, he will be even more effective giving some better players to play with. He has played back and forth in different lines, but even better players will help him out. Brody, two-point, wired one. He has 17 goals for the Calgary Hitman. Out there with his Hitman teammate Ryan White and Spencer Mahachek of the Vancouver Giants. Mahachek, his pass. Ryan White, Mahachek from a sharp angle and Preskirikov wasn't sure where it went. Kitty Oaken from Dimitri Zuzin opens the scoring at 6-11 and here's another Russian penalty. We'll sort out the penalty and the Western Hockey League will try and answer the Russian goal on the power play. The ADT Canada Russia Challenge 2006 on Rogers Sportsnet brought to you by MasterCard. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. An interference call on Lexi Shevalev here as he gets tied up with Spencer Mahachuk. You see Mahachuk tip that puck into the corner and then he tries to follow it up, but Shevalev takes that space away from him without the puck and he goes to the box for interference. Third power play of the contest for the Western Hockey League side. J.D. Watt of Vancouver out with Zach Boychuk of Lethbridge and Darren Helm of Medicine Hat. Keaton LRB of the Kamloops Blazers and Scott Jackson of Seattle to anchor on the blue line. LRB is a great skater eligible for the upcoming draft. He's a late 1988 birthday. J.D. Watt, here's LRB. Hard wrist shot. With some authority, I might add. High blocker side, you can see it from here. He's not a big scorer, but had a good opportunity there. As Jackson will be pestered by the spark plug. Nikita Mikno, who's had some fine flashes in this ADT Canada Russia challenge. He's played his best hockey, Peter, shorthand. And has a shorthanded goal. Almost had another one last night. The puck is cleared the length of the ice. Andre Kiriokin is third of the challenge, has opened the score. Only the third time in the series that the Russians have enjoyed a lead. The others in the Quebec League by counts of one to nothing and two to one. In Valdor, Franson, Mickelson fails to avoid the checking Zuzan who's really had some spark out west. Draws a penalty and zips a wrist shot on Carey Price. Good job by Zuzan on the penalty kill. Really aggressive here the Russian selects on this PK and so when this pass comes over to Mickelson there's not much space between he and the line. Zuzan continues to pester him and then you'll see losing control of it there is Mickelson and now Zuzan still comes down and is able to get a good shot on goal as a result. And it's just that little tug on the sweater Peter with the stick. Brendan, crosses the penalty. Brendan Mickelson coming back from major knee surgery. He played 20 games last year. Just over 20 games. The majority in Vancouver after he came over in a trade from Portland where he started his Western Hockey League career. Milav Zorov in a four on four scenario. Osipov. And, you know, here's the kind of situation that the Team Canada coaching staff and brass like to see. Just another different little wrinkle to see your players in is Setaguchi checked up at the line. Setaguchi's got to make certain that that puck leaves the line. 
He scored a goal one night ago in Chilliwack, a big one where he outmuscled a couple of defenders to do it. I thought he played exceptional well in last night's game. Here's Susan. As the Russians enjoy their first power play, but find themselves on the wrong side of the blue line entering the zone. Peter, something the Russian selects have been doing in the last couple of games is doing the simple thing here. Osipov gets it and he simply sends it at the net. Too many times we've seen in the series, especially early on, that they would make that extra move or make that extra pass and they wouldn't get a shot on goal. In the last three games, they've really worked on that and served them well. Stanislav Romanov. And one thing Carey Price can do exceptionally well is what you just witnessed. He can really play a puck. I saw him take shot on goal from just inside the blue line after the skate two days ago and bringing him up the crossbar religiously. It's almost frightening how much he can get on the shot with that big goal stick. Especially the way those guys have to hold the stick now. They give it that backhand with the with the goal glove on. It's amazing to see how that works. Puck was stuck on the ledge and the face off. Will it stay inside or come up? It'll stay inside with 30 seconds to go in the Brendan Mickelson penalty. Talk about penalties. Romanov is the, the series leader in that department. A couple of more penalties last night to give him 24 in the series. He has spent a little time in the sin bin. Osipov patiently locates Vadim Shipachev. Brody Dupont from St. Lazar, Manitoba. Clears it down the ice. Having a nice season in Calgary with a hitman. Here's Kaziana. Drops it neatly for Shapacha. And Ryan White sends it the length of the ice. One of the league's leading scorers, Ryan White from Brandon. Nice move by Kaziana. Every game he's shown flashes. The Tampa Bay draft pick wearing number 11 for the Russians. He plays a physical game. I like the edge in which what he plays. Did you say something about playing a physical game? I sure did. J.D. Watt came to the table with his best physical game as Helm was in behind the defenders, but stopped by Preskirica. Helm with Watt and Boychuk. Nearly another hip throw by J.D. Watt in his first international experience. I was really looking forward to watching him play just because of that physical edge he brings to the table. Well, he brought it and continues to bring it. Preskirikov likes to play it out himself. Francis. Nicholson returns the favor. Zip. Nicks it. And he'll shoot it diagonally and deep. Nixon, 31 points on the year in Kamloops. He's the Blazers' leading scorer. An add to the game when Adam Hudson of Spokane couldn't play in the series with an injury. J.D. Watt. He's made quite an impact. Lots of great NHL regional hockey action coming your way on Rogers Sportsnet on your respective channels. There's a pretty nice lineup for the next few days. The Western Hockey League lineup looking for a way to tie that man's team. Always animated, Evgeny Papikin. I'm guessing he won't forget this tour of our country. <laughs> I don't think many of us will. He might have a word or two for his own federation when he gets back as well. And if he doesn't, he likely he should. should. Sergei Zachapeko. Nice move to neutralize. Gary Price, the backhand attempt. Mikno tried to direct it quickly on net, but fan. Well, let's once again join the third member of our broadcast team, Louis Jean. Louis. Thank you, uh, Peter. I'm with Kevin Lowe, the uh, general manager of the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, first of all, your thoughts on this Russian team? These, they're still feisty tonight and take the lead. Yeah, they, uh, you know, it's been a long series for them, and uh, they're a depleted group tonight, they're playing with a smaller lineup, but. You no, know, they got a lot of pride in that country, so I'm sure they're going to have a good showing tonight. Jim Hammond obviously has the heavy task of selecting Team Canada this year at the World Junior level. You were part of that with Team Canada uh, at the Olympics. How is it? And obviously, you face a lot of criticism when you do that. Well, we don't want to call it criticism. We might call it a little bit of scrutiny, uh, perhaps a little less at the junior level. But uh, 
a difficult decision nevertheless because there's a lot of great kids in this country at the pro level and, the, and at the junior level and uh, a lot of them deserve it but you can unfortunately you can only pick you know 20 odd and, and uh, you know generally the, the, they are the best selections appreciate your time thank you you're welcome Peter Kevin Lowe general manager of the Edmonton Oilers and tough news losing Alex Nemsky for at least a couple of weeks with a shoulder injury it's going to kill me in the hockey pool what a great dynamic talent he sure is the one time Hall Olympic star is Susan with a break Susan Price stuck him not once but twice good touch pass here it all starts from the back end with Romanov and then Kalyanin just tips it ahead to Susan here's Romanov first pass little touch there by Kalyanin that springs Susan in alone now he gets a step with that good reach of his two whacks at it but Carey Price follows him to that left post Milov Zorov popped away from Osipov and now Mickelson with the puck Cody Franson, a draft pick of the Nashville Predators, a third rounder. What a steal that is. Boychuk lifts the stick, allowing Darren Helm to carry on. He's a Detroit draft. Mickelson, good hard shot from Mickelson as Preskirikov chops at Darren Helm. Well, father, he's got it in his bloodlines. His father, Bill, played the National Hockey League, but there is one record that his dad owns that he surely does not want to duplicate. I know what that is. Minus 82 back in the 74-75 season. I don't see that happening to Brendan. And as you spoke earlier, Peter, he's coming back off that knee injury, and you talk to scouts around the league and coaches around the league that say it is only right now that he's just trying, starting to find his stride once again, feeling almost 100%. Lots of international experience for Brendan Mickelson over the last few years at the under 18 and under 17 levels. He's a lucky guy because last year his team goes to the Memorial Cup and he doesn't get a chance to play, so he's healthy enough to play this year, and now his team's hosting. A terrific Vancouver Giants team that we will show you on a few occasions during our Rogers Sportsnet CHL schedule. Including one we can't wait for, January 21st, when Vancouver hosts the Everett Silvertips. Brock Nixon. Shot blocked by Zatcha Pago. Maxwell of the Kootenai Ice. Taylor Ellington of Everett. Held it in momentarily. This is Victor Tikhanov. Sheds one check, but Nixon is taking care of the puck, courtesy of a good back check. Branson surveys the situation and dishes off for Ellington. I have seen fewer fine first passers in junior hockey in recent years than number six, Cody France. He always seems to keep his head up and make great first passes out of his zone. And if not, Peter, his skating ability is so good that Ah, what the heck, I'll just carry it up the ice. Kerry Oaken has the lone goal, but fails to transfer that time from skate to stick. Not a lot of great chances for the Western Hockey League in this period. Somewhat surprising. Two, according to our excellent statistician, Scott Karabich, who can eat popcorn and keep stats at the same time. A veteran at that. The ever, Ryan Russell. Down low, here's Setaguchi. The return for Ryan Russell just fails to materialize. Can even throw the popcorn at him. It's Kalyanin. Just fails to hook up with Dimitri Zuzan. Might be the best forward in the game so far. He's been dynamite. Has it again. Zuzan. Cutting right in front and Jackson just prevented him from getting a shot away. Give can give this Russian team a lot of credit in game six. They've been the better bunch. And we haven't been able to say that in a lot of periods in this series. Isn't that the truth? But they've come out with a lot of jump in this game. They have a... Mahacek, fine pass. Brody Dupont scores! The Calgary Hitman forward, just as you were. Praising the Russians, both of them, says tied the game. This goal is all about the release. Excellent work along the boards by Mahachev. Look at this touch pass. Right past Shapachev, and then DuPont goes in, 
and just lifts the stick barely above the knee, and that quick release doesn't allow Proskurikov time to get into position. And as he goes down in that butterfly, it's too late. The puck's already by him. Excellent release there by Dupont. At one point, Peter, he looked like he was going to fake the shot, but instead of faking it, he actually went through with it and faked Proskurikov out. Brody Dupont tied for eighth in scoring in the Western Hockey League. Shows us why. Backhander from Milan Zorov. I thought that may have caught the net, but play continues. Shepachev watched closely by Darren Helm, who works him over. Helm pokes it free for Zach Boychuk with J.D. Watt. Boychuk backhands it in. Mahachek and Jackson draw the assists on the equalizer at 15-59, and a goal that Priskirikov would like to have back. Well, both goals can say the same thing about the ones that have gotten past them in this period. Sasha Pekko, nice feed for Mikno. Driving to the net, Kaziana. Mikno from a sharp angle right on target. Sasha Pekko, greeted by Brendan Mickelson. Again, just another simple play, getting it to the net. Kaziana, he has a couple of goals in this challenge, and Franson knocks him to the ice. I'm back, I'm back. I'm back. That's a pay go. Finds Mikno. Kaziana up to the front of the net. Runs into Franson again, and Franson, look at that play. How calm and cool was that to help clear the zone? First pass, clear the zone. DuPont's up in there. There's going to be a penalty. Which up? Ellington. Wrist shot wide of the target. Mohacek with a little room spins. And Proskirikov hangs up. The Western Hockey League about to enjoy the power play when we return to Kamloops. Be sure to tune in to our next junior telecast. It comes your way this coming Sunday as the Kingston Frontenacs clash with John Tavares and the Oshawa Generals. It'll be presented on Sports in Ontario as we take you back inside the Interior Saving Center in Kamloops, British Columbia. Well, when John Cody Franson of the Vancouver Giants uh, had his sophomore season last year, he was nothing short of phenomenal. He scored 15 goals, racked up 55 points, and many experts believe that right now he's the front runner to win the MVP in the CHL. And his mission as he made his international debut tonight is fairly simple, to leave a lasting impression with the Team Canada brass. Standing at six foot five and over 210 pounds, it's easy to see why Nashville picked the Giant. Make that Giants defenseman with their third round pick in 2005. Vancouver assistant coach Craig Bonner concurred with Nashville's decision-making process. I know talking to Nashville's people that uh, he's a guy that they uh, they think has a bright future and, and talking to other NHL teams, they, they wish they had him. So uh, I see nothing but bright things for, for him in the future. And he, he's a player who, uh, who has some things that, that a lot of guys don't. Uh, they make him a special guy and, and I think he's going to have a long, uh, long NHL career ahead of him. Franson's teammate, Brett Festerling, says there's some simple logic at play when examining Cody's success in hockey so far. Good old-fashioned hard work. Definitely, he's a guy that I think um, you know, strives to be better every day. He works hard off the ice, he works hard on the ice. And um, he's a competitor and he tries to get, you know, to be the best he can be. And, um, you know, we see that as a team every day where we've got people don't usually see that. And, uh, you know, it's shown on the ice and everybody gets to see that now. If you didn't know who Cody Franson was before the Memorial Cup in May, you certainly did by the end of that week in Moncton. He led all defensemen in the tourney with five points, including a dandy hat trick in the tiebreaker. Slap pass, Franson, he scores! It's all going Cody Franson in the Vancouver Giants way here today in Moncton. It was awesome, to say the least. You know, we didn't win, but uh, the experience in itself was just something else. Um, just the atmosphere and you know, standing out on the blue line in game one where you're getting introduced and both teams are standing out there, they got the trophy out. It's, it's a feeling that, you know, you can't really describe. It's, uh, you know, the trophy's right there. You just want to go pick it up, but you can't. But, uh, you know, we're looking to get it this year. If Cody was to bring the Memorial Cup back to his hometown of Sycamus, British Columbia, he wouldn't be the first to do so. Fellow Nashville draft pick Shea Weber won the hardware in 2004 with the Kelowna Rockets. The two have been close since they were kids. 
up until I was about 10 years old, we lived just down the street and uh, we played a lot of road hockey together in Sycamus. Uh, my family and his family are very close and uh, me and him keep in touch over the season. And uh, you know, I, I consider him a good friend of mine and uh, they're a close family friend. Growing up and playing minor hockey in the West was nothing but fun for Cody, who spent a lot more time at the local rink than most kids, but with good reason. Uh, I liked it a lot growing up there. Uh, my dad ran the rink in Sycamore while I was growing up, and he still does. And, uh, you know, coming up through school and kindergarten and the younger days, I uh, didn't get to finish too many days of school. Dad got to pull me out and go skate, and mom wasn't always so happy about it, but, uh, you know, I don't think she's complaining too much now. <laughs> it's true. The complaints are few and far between these days for Cody Franson as well. He leads his team in scoring, a team that is red hot heading into the year that they are set to host the Memorial Cup. An NHL career is not too far down the road as well, but right now he has one focus, impressing enough to make that trip to Sweden next month to represent Canada. Oh, World Juniors, uh, that'd be something else. You know, it's right up there with the Mem Cup. Um, you know, it's something you sit there and you watch every Christmas and the atmosphere that they show on TV when you're just watching something like that is amazing. And to, uh, you know, get an invite to that or even be considered as an honor, you know, playing in the World Juniors is, uh, you know, something I'd love to do. Franson in his international debut making his presence felt. After 20 minutes of play, we're deadlocked at one goal apiece. The play of the first period is brought to you by Easton Sports. The world's best players choose Easton. We've selected the Brody DuPont goal for the hard work on the boards by Spencer Mahachuk. He takes the puck and then makes a perfect pass. The third element that makes this goal, the quick release by Brody DuPont. Lifts it just above the ankle to finish it off. The lone WHL goal and a 1-1 tie in the first. The ADT Canada Russia Challenge 2006 on Rogers Sportsnet. Brought to you by Buckley's. It tastes awful, and it works. And by Rogers Wireless. The latest MP3 and camera phones only from Rogers. Through 20 minutes to play, even all around. Nearly exactly even in terms of shots, and certainly even where it matters the most. Kerry Oaken with his third of this series. Meanwhile, Brody DuPont in his first period of action as a new addition to the team picks up his first for the WHL in a 1 1 draw. Brody DuPont is a draft pick of the New York Rangers, a third rounder in 2005. Stanislav Romanov mm -hmm. avoids the check of Spencer Mohacek, who said some jump. Boy, what a great playoff he had one year ago helping Vancouver win the Western Hockey League title. And here he comes into the zone. Good low shot. Kraskirikov again makes the save. This doesn't look real comfortable. I hate to be hard on him, but he's been so good in this series, but just looks very unsure of himself after getting the night off yesterday in Chilliwack. And Nikita Betspilov acquitted himself so well in that game. Well, you might be too if you were pelted like he was in Good point. six in the five games in which he's played here. Good job here by Mahachak just to gain the line. Good shot on goal. I like the shot because it's nice and low in an area where Praskirikov had a little trouble controlling the rebound. Good pickups defensively there to get the trailer this by the time, Russian select. Sorry. At this time, I'd like to thank Eugene Belashenko and the fine people at RussianProspects.com without their website and his help. This series from a Russian standpoint would be much more difficult to do and prepare for. So Eugene and company, thank you very much. It's a great website. I highly recommend Russianprospects.com. Jared Helm, Canadianprospects.com right there, <laughs> hoping to get an invite to the national junior team selection camp in the Medicine Hat Tiger with a nice play to force a infraction. Well, how many times do you see this play off the boards and a player continues to go wide to try and gain that lane for himself and that hit, hook there by Osipov and then a couple of more hooks later on. Zubov had one in there. Kazianov had one. It's the Russian hook hat trick, but it's Kazianov who is selected out of the trio. His second trip to the sin bin in this game. As Mikno off the draw clears the zone. This is power play chance number five. Franson Nicholson, the bookends for the Vancouver Giants. Maxwell along with Hamill and Nixon up 
front as Franson just fails to hold it in. What a bullet pass there by Franson from the line, Peter. And you really have to give a lot of respect to David Poyle and his entire scouting staff for the way in which they have drafted some young players. His one of his best pals, as you saw uh, during the intermission, is Shea Weber, who is now doing a tremendous job with the Nashville Predators. Pretty high on that young man. Shea Weber, what a great tournament he had in Grand Forks for Canada on that phenomenal 2005 edition of our World Junior Team. Nixon, great chance, man. Here's Franson finding the net. Well, Peter, good defensemen have that knack to know when to jump into holes, and you love to watch this type of play. You can't even see him in your screen right here, but as this puck goes towards the net, and the original shot is taken by Hamill, it's Franson who picks up the rebound. There's Hamill, sneaks in, gets the shot off the pads, and then Franson streaks in off of his post, and because he's a defenseman, no one had even thought he would come down there, but the Rebound ends up right on his tape and he picks up the power play marker. Cody Franson with 10 goals and 34 points so far for the Vancouver Giants. Three of those goals, game winners. And you're right. How would he know that the puck might even come to that spot in that scenario? Good instincts. Zanaguchi, good play on the forecheck out there with Drazenovic and Ryan Russell. Drazenovic. Taps it down with the help of Russell. Setaguchi losing his balance in a battle with Igor Zubov. Here's Setaguchi, good strength. Working diligently. Setaguchi keeps it alive, and now Chevelev will clear it, and then penalty on its way this time to the Western Hockey League as Franson has scored from Hamill and Maxwell at 133. Well, a hard right turn for Setaguchi, and he got a little uh, over anxious there on the forecheck, but you have to appreciate the work on the first two tries and banging bodies into the end boards. But as the play started to exit the zone, he administers the hook. There's a good chop there at Zubov, and then as he goes down there, see Setaguchi just banging bodies, and as, as it was turned up ice, he administered the hook. He was so tired from the forecheck. Milav Zorov, the Russians with a man power advantage. Romanov, Osipov, good feed. The Russians have moved the puck much better the last couple of games on the power play. They've really extended that power play more to the perimeter, and that's allowed them to get more pucks to the net, which is something they did not do early on in the series. Milav Zorov falling down was Ellerby. Lazora spinning. Romana thought about shooting it, did, and probably shouldn't have. Blocked by DuPont. You see DuPont signal to the bench. He knows when this puck goes to this side, like right now, he's going to get off. Scott Jackson chops it. And turning again is number 14, Milav Zorov. Nifty move, and he's displayed a number of those. Drops it out, Osipov. Romanov on target and Price just side in the nick of time to stop it. I'm not sure how. Romanov that time fanned. Excellent play by Mahachek to spring his Vancouver Giant teammate, J.D. Watt, who was a physical force to be sure in period one. Boy, Mahachek has had a ton of jump in this game. He's been dynamite. From Leftbridge, Albert. Look at Helm creating havoc on the penalty kill. And that's the type of role, if he is selected to the national junior team, that he could really flourish in. Good speed, hard worker, and supply a little offense here and there. Very versatile. Kiri Okin. Romana. Stopped by Ryan Russell. Kalyanin knocking Franson off the puck for Kiri Okin. Igor Zubov, high wrist shot through a screen, missed it in. Good chance for the rush. Tail end of the power play. Zubov. Gideokin and a penalty to Kalyanin who interfered here. Seneguchi out of the box, in alone, robbed by Perskirikov. Oh, a ton of action here at the start of the second period. Perskirikov stacking the pads, a little Aunt Jemima stopped there. He can't believe it. See the penalty come up here. Watch Kellyanne and go right by Carey Price here. As this puck swings back down towards the goal and then it exits the zone, you see Kellyanne and just take the skates from underneath of Price. 
And as all that's going on, Setaguchi gets a chance to go the other way, but the stacked pads he could not beat. Nice pass from Mickelson to spring Setaguchi, who had just come out of the penalty box, and now it's the Western Hockey League going to the power play. They've taken the lead here in the second period on the goal by Cody Franson in his first international game. I wish our Taylor Ellington on this power play up front Hamill who has an assist Brock Nixon and in front of the net is Ben Maxwell of the Kootenai Ice Hamill here we go with the exchange Maxwell wish our fans stopped by Zach Pico then an opportunity for Nixon who just shot it wide. Hamill parked in front now they work the puck down low Maxwell, Wichart, a rolling puck pass, Hamill. Maxwell, he has a little more jump tonight. Ellington, wrist shot, hit his ever teammate McCants before Maxwell let it go on target. No, can't clear, this could be dangerous. Wichart, he wants another. He scored two last night, hadn't scored two goals in one Western Hockey League game in his entire career. Hamill. Nixon, good work by Mikno. Wrist shot, Ellington, and clear by Zuba. Good job. A lot of action going on in this power play. It's not like the normal four man box you see, and that's forced the WHL really to move the puck. And they've done so with great efficiency so far in this power play. Wishart of the Prince George Cougars, the San Jose first runner in that. Almost surprised Chris Skirica. Ryan White of the Calgary Hitman, a good shot. White can fire it a little bit too, but Ty Wishart goes off after a long shift playing the minute and a half of this power play. Last night, he was the best defenseman on the ice. One time shot here that beat Bespalov on the short side. And then a little later, he simply sends it to the net. It did move, but it hit the Russian stick in front of the net. Wishart picking up two goals in last night's game. Keaton Ellerby, the hometown Kamloops Blazers. Jackson is shot. Just missed on the near post. Ryan White. Played very well in the prospects game last year in Ottawa did Ryan White. Romano. Bothered by White and Mahachek, who continues to impress. Ryan White. Great pass! And a dandy finish by Brody DuPont, who has two. What a pass! Oh boy, there's the Calgary connection right there. But I'm going to tell you what, Peter, this all starts because of Ellerby's play at the line. As it looks like he's about to reverse play, he pulls all the Russian defenders towards the middle of the ice. Now once they start to come back, that's when that seam opens up. And as soon as that seam opens up, White puts it right on DuPont's tape. Oh my goodness. What a passing play there. But I give all the credit there to Ellerby because he started to draw everyone towards the middle of the ice. Not a power play goal, but it is the second of the contest for the Calgary Hitman forward, Brody DuPont. And what a fine feed from Ryan White as Helm turns away from a defender and snaps it on target. Two unanswered goals here to start the second period in the Western Hockey League in front by a pair. Well, Brody DuPont gets credited for his second goal of the game, but watch Ellerby here. The natural progression is to go to the far point. Everyone starts to move that way. He reverses play. Now, with all that space created, White has the opportunity to shoot or pass. Now the defender is forced to come out at him, and when that happens, that seam opens up, and he makes a perfect pass. Helm <laughs> attempts to slide it for Boychuk, and Proskurikov plays both goalie and defenseman there. Breaking it up, the goal, DuPont second of the game from White and Ellerby at 6.28. Well, Skirikov now really starting to show some signs of fatigue. He wasn't all that sharp, although made a lot of saves in that first period. But, Peter, it's been a long road trip, if you will, for this entire Russian select squad, and no one has been tested more than for Skirikov. The Russians had an excellent first period. They have not registered a shot on goal here so far through the first seven minutes of period number two. I think the message was delivered in the other room in between periods as well. 
because the first was not a great one for the Western Hockey League top gun. Yeah, just a couple of scoring chances. They did not go into the tough areas as much as I thought they might. Uh, you're seeing a much different story here in the second period. Elok Zorov, there's a good scoring chance. Kazionov pulled the trigger but fired it over top of the cage. Here's Helm. Darren Helm stocked up at the line, carrying on his point jump with Watt. J.D. Watt from Cremona, Alberta. Helm comes away with a loose puck in front. Here's Kazion. Good support by Shapachev to come back there and help out defensively. Good pass, Milan Zorov for Kazionov. He can snap it. Missed that time. Susan holds it in. Milan Zorov blocked by Brendan Mickelson. And Maxwell has a roll off his stick. Two goals, Franson and Dupont in this second period of the Western Hockey League in front of the young men from our country trying to sweep this series for a second straight year. Maxwell has a chance hit the side of the net. On the ice with Nixon, who's been good, and Hamill. Here's Hamill. Susan on top of him took away time and space in a hurry. As it comes outside the line, and then Ellington fans as Susan tries to scoot away. Offhanded at the line. Susan still has a lot of time. A chance to crack the Russian squad. I think you'll see a few of these guys uh, come late December. Mind you, then again, if they send over a reasonable facsimile, it might be easier to evaluate. Wishart. <laughs> Deflect. Out of play. Ty Wishart, the San Jose pick. Carey Price. We've watched him between. Uh, between uh, whistles, Peter, and he seems to be stretching. I don't know if he's being bothered by something right now, but between most whistles, he's down there stretching things out. We saw this at the last break. Here he is here, just really trying to stretch things out. Either that or he's sick of the stomach. Ache. 6 4 2 5 can shoot the puck so well, moves well laterally, and the reason that the Montreal Canadiens selected him fifth overall in 2005. Senegucci nearly got free at center. Jackson, nice turn in his own zone, but then he turned it over and good Karamov escape. Krasanovic and Kraskirikov will take no chances. Peter, we've talked about all the young defensemen that this league produces year in and year out, and here's another one of those guys. Uh, Ellerby has at the top of the list for central scouting as far as WHL skaters is concerned and it's pretty easy to see why early on in this game did a great job in setting up the last goal he's got size he's got a little bitterness in his game he's got a good shot there's a lot of things well you find who has two goals shoots it in i remember watching keaton ellerby for the first time in kitchener at the selection camp for canada's under 18 team in 2005 and he just skated so well i just couldn't take my eyes off big man that skates like that Ryan White, another opportunity in Prescirica. That was a good toe save as he stayed with it. As he on off the other direction, has half the step on Franson. And Franson recovers and clears it up. Chevelle nearly popped it up. Kazianov finds Milav Zorov with Shapachev, and it's offside. The Interior Saving Center, the site of this challenge wrap-up affair. Peter Spencer Mahachuk has been so diligent on the forecheck and is playing a great defensive game. Right here, he just sticks his stick in. That creates the turnover. Then all of a sudden, it's a chance the other way. DuPont drop back to White, fakes a shot, and then a good shot on goal. All because Mahachuk does the simple thing, sticks his stick out at the red line to create the turnover. He's been fantastic here tonight. Well, we saw where NHL Central scouting rated him as we take a look at Medicine Hat Tigers head coach and Western Hockey League head coach Willie Desjardins. As for the red line report, scouting service, and they rate everyone. Mahachek's at 56 in their November ranking. This is Boychuk, not eligible till next year, and he makes no mistake in its 4-1. Just a terrible spot for the puck to be turned over, and Boychek really has Praskirikov at his mercy. 
This game comes in over the line. Now, there's two Russian selects back to get it, but there's good work by Helm to send it at least towards the front of the net. Now, when Boychek gets that puck there, there's no chance at all for Perskirikov because there are so many options for the shooter. But look at the work by Helm. He beats Romanov to that puck. He was three steps behind him. I mean, that is tremendous work by Helm. Good finish from Boychuk. One of the Western League's leading scorers, and he's just 17 years of age and a late birthday, not even eligible until next year's draft. The Western Hockey League about to be penalized as Helm and Ellington drive the assists on Boychuk's first of this ADT Canada Russia challenge at 10:23. Evgeny Papikin has really had a good look at the stars of this Canadian Hockey League right across the country and Zach Hamill will go to the box for his work on Zach Apeko, who was slow to get up but he's finally made his way up under his own power and will stay on the power play. Here's Zach Apeko working down low and he simply sticks that foot behind him almost a slew foot if you will. See if the Russians can get something going on the power play they've been thoroughly dominated in this period. Russians according to the shots on goal clock still don't have their first shot of the period nearly 11 minutes into it Osipov Zubov in the slot Tikhanov off misses Mikno out there with Zachapeko and he's one young man that I think has deserved more ice time in this challenge well, it's chicken or egg Peter I mean when he has got the ice he hasn't played Particularly, well, he's been okay, but he hasn't really stood out, if you will. No, I'll give you. So that. at that point, do you give the guy more ice, or, or you know, chicken or egg theory? There. I know, but he's never really played with anyone either. I would have liked to have seen him on the top two units a time or two more. As Carey Price gloves the puck that was flipped. In the air by Milav Zorov. Try to see the Americans' uh, goaltender, Carey Price. Uh, you know, Louis Jean got the chance to talk to him yesterday, and Louis is always interested in those players that are in the Montreal organization. And he's had the chance to talk to a lot of people around here. There are a ton of scouts in the building here today, agents all over the place. Everyone's high in this guy. Chevalev shot right on. Price had a good look at it, and our Louis Jean, you have to give that young man credit, the third member of our crew. Boy, he works hard, doesn't he? He sure does. He's, he's going to wear out a black bear or oh, two before his career I think is over. He's worn one out on this trip alone with all the calls and digging and researching he's done and preparation. Look at Carpal Tunnel just watching him work that thing. Treat to work with. We've thoroughly enjoyed our trip for a second straight year, the three of us and our entire crew. Romanov, Chevalev, Fand, Milav Zorov. Watched closely by Franson and now DuPont, who has a pair of goals to lead the way. Franson knocks his man down. Milan Zorov, dangerous to the front of the net. And, well, we gave him some good billing. We might as well hear from him. I thank you, Peter. I'm with Jerry Price, father of Kerry Price, a former goaltender. And you played against the Russians at one point in your career. A long time ago I did back in 1980 when they had uh, two teams that were touring before the Olympics and we got beat pretty bad but I did play them. Well obviously the situation has turned around how badly does Kerry want to play for Team Canada right now. Oh he really wants to it's just like any of these young men here they're they work their whole lives to do something like this and it's just a huge opportunity and a great privilege to even be considered for it. Jerry, you were drafted by the Philadelphia Flyers that played uh, professionally uh, for a little while. Uh, can you give your son any advice on to how to prepare for the games? Uh, some, yeah. It's a lot of playing goal is mental, and um, I think you know I've helped him along with that as he's grown up. But um, once he's on the ice, he's on his own, and I, you know, I'm very proud of him in the way that he's handled all the things that have come his way, and look forward to good things. Certainly the Montreal Canadiens are looking forward to good things with him. Uh, Peter? Thank you very much, Louis. Taylor Ellington has a couple of assists in the games in this challenge. Wishart up the middle. J.D. Watt cutting him off of the pass was Romanov, who stepped up very nicely that time in the neutral zone. Mikno. Thatcher Peko. 
Tikhonov. off. Sachapenko to the front of the net, stopped by Price. Here's an opportunity, and again it's Helm. What a period he's having. Helm with one. Helm with a move. He scores! Darren Helm, maybe book your ticket son for Calgary. Oh, man. I'm going to see this one a few more times before it's all said and done. This is unbelievable. Look at the speed Helm comes with through the zone. And then he says, you know what? I'm going to take it to the net myself. Whoop. Oh, there he goes, right to the backhand upstairs. At everybody. And if you look closely in the corner, you may see a jock or two. What an unbelievable move by Darren Helm to the backhand. The Medicine Hat Tiger in a fifth round selection of the Detroit Red Wings, putting on quite a show here in the second period. What a goal! Maybe the goal of the challenge. You might have got booked for Calgary right there. I think I heard it. You did for me, but as you'll find out after this period, and then more importantly, Monday, <laughs> my opinion on players means absolutely nothing. But that won't stop both of us in the second period intermission from just having some fun. And we're going to play Jim Hammond. That'll be fun. I'm looking forward to that. We have some discrepancies between us. Not too many, but a couple. A couple. And then on Monday, when we're about 10 guys wrong each, well, you know, yeah. make sure we stick to what we'd like to think we do best. Calling the games, not scouting players. Hope the boys aren't taping. No, they will. They'll find out. I know how it works and won't be ripped, especially if the list doesn't match up very well. This match is up well for Kerry Price, who stands up for at least slides. Down low to Rod Milazoro. Five to one after the beauty from Darren Helm. Shapachev intercepted by Keaton Ellerby. Hey. Big stride, six foot four defenseman. Osipov, Kalyanin, and Nicholson tried to throw a big hit. Brendan Mickelson, the Anaheim second rounder, 31st overall in 2005. You can learn a few things from the odd defenseman in Anaheim these days, couldn't you? <laughs> Couple of good ones there. Chris Henovic shot it wide. Here's Franson throwing it through the blue paint. Oh, it almost reminds me of Franson and Russell. I mean, if you, if you take it a step back, obviously we're near as good as those guys, but in a few years, you get the size, Peter Meyer. You have Russell, and then you get a little more size in France. Kind of like Pronger. Good skaters, good puck handlers. Well, Nicholson coming off the knee surgery, the way he skated would show me he's pretty close to being 100% again. I mean, you like the way he's moved around tonight. Very good. I don't think he's showing any ill effects of that knee surgery at all. Good for him. Wishart. Ellington. That's it, that's it. His pass finds its way through to Mahachek. DuPont and White are his line mates, and they performed admirably in the contest, supplying a couple of goals. Both off the stick of DuPont, who nearly stole it. Four unanswered for the Western Hockey League side in this period. Five unanswered overall. This Mahachek. Like a freight train in the direction of Mikno, who wanted no part of it. And here comes DuPont with Mahachek, tail end of his ship. DuPont looking for three, but it was blocked. Good work by Mikno to come back and take the stick away from Mahachek. His motor never stops running, does it, number 10? Mikno, Tikhanov, the attempted deflection. Frank Price has made some good saves in this period, too, when called upon. Not that he's been real busy by any stretch in this frame. And oftentimes, that's much tougher for a goaltender. And those are the kind of situations, you know, moving forward that you could really face if you're the Canadian goaltender in Sweden. Mahachek. Flip it in, and now the Canadian youngsters will make a wholesale line. He just took a number, Mahachek, too. Zubov came at him and thought he might have stuck out the knee at him. Boy, Chuck. To Helm. He's tied up effectively by Zuba. Shapachev and Kaziana breaking in. Fires it on target. And Carey Price standing tall in goal. After quite a goal by Darren Helm. 
Have a look at Dimitri Zuzan. We've seen J.D. Watt all game long. He just dip, sticks that hip out on Zuzan, sends him to the ice, and Zuzan very slowly went to the bench after that. I haven't seen him since that hit. As for J.D. Watt, he and uh, his teammate Spencer Mahachuk have played one outstanding game here tonight. Both very physical, both in on the forecheck, both uh, playing smart hockey right now. No surprise, look at the coach they play for. What a team, and that team in Vancouver just got better today as they acquired Kendall McArdle, the Giants did, from the Moose Jaw Warriors. I think everybody knew that McArdle was on the move at some point. It seemed to be that the Giants jumped the gun early to make sure to acquire him. For Jason Reese, and a draft pick is Price a little trouble with the wrist shot that time. And you'd have to think not only is McArdle very excited I would think about playing for a dynamite team but he's also going home and here's what Don he has to say about his most recent acquisition. Yeah we uh, acquired Kendall uh, you know we thought that uh, you know special year for us being in the Memorial Cup and when you can acquire a player like Kendall that uh, can give us a, a real good work ethic give us speed and has ability to score goals we thought it was a real good opportunity to acquire him and, and a chance to take him. And there are the particulars on the trade Kendall McArdle a Florida Panthers first rounder in 2005 20th overall. Goes home. He's from Burnaby, so that's pretty exciting for him. You know what's funny is you remember the other day when we caught up with Don for the first time. <laughs> yep. What did I say to him on his way into the dressing room? So you looking for another score, and how did he respond? Well, he kind of gave me a bit of a sh shy grin and went inside the room. He said, do you have one for me? Yeah, and then he, he went had, into yeah, the room. He yeah. looked at that coy look and uh, apparently he had one. All the while he was working on it. Uh -huh. So much for off the record stuff that we thought we'd get. Well, exactly. Thanks, Donnie. What a dynamite coach and great memories for Don A here. He won two Memorial Cups in Kamloops in 1994 and 1995. Blazers winning three Memorial Cups in four years. Tom Rennie was the coach in 92. And then Don Hay, the head coach in 94 and 95. The coaches have come through here. Yeah, and Ken Hitchcock just happened to be the coach before Tom Rennie. And he did not win a Memorial Cup, but participated in a couple, did Ken Hitchcock. This is Nick Krasinovic of the Prince George Cougars. We're into the last minute of the completely dominated Western Hockey League second frame. Ryan Russell wearing the captain's C. I guess you have to be named Russell to wear a C for the Western Hockey League in this ADT Canada Russia Challenge. Senator Gucci in the doorstep failed to book it. Wow. Senator Gucci, first round selection in 05, eighth overall by San Jose. Osipov, that could be holding, don't you think? Oh, that's the. Anytime you throw the hand out like that, you're admitting guilt at some point. Jerome McGinley was there. Shane Doan was there. Matter of fact, Doan, Darcy Tucker in 1994. That's Nolan Baumgartner, the assistant. Oh, the list went on and on. Corey Hirsch, the goaltender in 1992 when Don Hay was an assistant coach. Scott Niedermeyer on that 1992 team. We don't have time, all right? Ask you to go through the summaries. Gotta save it, though. Too much information. 5 1. The Western Hockey League leads. Brody DuPont has two goals, and I'm excited about our second period intermission and the interview that we'll hear from Hockey Canada and the National Junior Team's head scout, Jim Hammond, and he's been just so great for us to deal with during this challenge. Cody Franson scored, Brody DuPont has two. They're in hell. What a goal that was. 
Be sure to tune in to our next junior telecast. It comes your way on Sports in Ontario this coming Sunday, featuring the Kingston Frontenacs going up against John Tavares and his Oshawa Generals. But right now, we take you back inside the, the home of the Kamloops Blazers with the head of Hockey Canada, Jim Hammett. And Jim, first question, where are we right now in terms of the process with the evaluation of the players? I mean, uh, one period away, and then it's decision time. Yeah, it's hard to believe we're already there, but... I'd say we're probably about 95%. We're still going to discuss as a staff uh, three, four players, and it'll give me a chance to talk to uh, talk to Craig Hartsburg a little bit and make our final decisions. Are things heating up? Do pretty much, uh, you know, is there a consensus from everyone in terms of who comes, who doesn't? Yeah, I, I, like I say, I think we're almost there. Uh, we had a, a very productive conference call today, and, and uh, I think all we have to do is, uh, you know, talk about, like I said, one or two more guys and then uh, uh, wrap it up and announce a team. Do you have an idea how many players you're going to invite to camp? That's one of the things we're still wrestling with right now. I said from the beginning of the process that uh, I really thought that we had a lot of depth to choose from up front, so uh, we're still determining how many how many forwards we're going to bring, I think we're all set on uh, goaltending and, and defense. Is that really the toughest part right now up front? Because there's so many players that seem to be pretty much in the same uh, bowl right now. I think so. I, I think uh, once we do get them to camp, it's going to be a, uh, probably the best position to battle for. I think from the 7-7 seven, seven to 13, is it's, uh, it's going to be a battle, so I'm looking forward to it. I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. Thanks for this. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, let's have things upstairs now to Peter and Sam. Guys? Louis, thanks so much. And I don't know why, for some reason, you and I are going to try and jump in that man's <laughs> shoes. We should leave this completely alone. And on Monday, when the list comes out, we're probably going to find out why we should just stick to calling the games. But we thought, for fun, at the end of the series, that you and I would come up with 32 players from the CHL who we think could very well earn an invite to the national junior team's final selection camp in Calgary. And we do agree on a lot of guys. Well, you see Ryan Russell down there, maybe getting a chance to play with his brother Chris. Uh, Mark Andre Klish with his two goals in the second leg of this series. Devin Setaguchi with the way he's played last night and so far here tonight. James Neal is a guy that maybe is not on a lot of people's radar, but I know they're very high on what he's done. As far as the defensemen are concerned, we agreed on 10 of a possible 12 because the breakdown for goaltenders, we picked 16 forwards and 12 defensemen. Well, we looked at the five returning defensemen. Then we added Cody Franson as a sixth, who we think will go to Sweden. And then that battle for that seventh spot, a couple of those guys we agree on. Of course, we were very set and feel very strongly about our four selections at the goaltender spot. Yeah, that probably took us the least amount of time. And we're still, we, we just wish we had more time to see these kids <laughs> more often, which is, you know, a situation we don't have. Not that it matters because nobody pays us to know those kind of things. And here's the guys we don't agree on necessarily. Well, I'll start with Carl Osner. Uh, you don't get a chance to see him play too much, but I really like the way he played last night. He's a very steady defenseman. Has somewhat, just starting to work on his uh, upside. Matthew Carl, you always got to find a dark horse. See, he's my guy there, uh, Bouchard. I really like the way he handles the puck at high speed. So there are three or four of my selections that we just Well, you know on. what, and I like all your guys. <laughs> and, you know, Chris Stewart isn't there. I wonder about the incident because I had him before the series as a for sure guy. We both did. After That's right. the camp that he had this summer in Calgary. So, you know, the neat thing is I just can't wait till the list comes out on Monday. We still have one period remaining in this challenge. If this gentleman isn't on the invite list, somebody call the FBI. Time to look back at a second period dominated by the Western Hockey League. First, it's France and sneaking down off the point to bury it. For Skirikov, no chance. And then a good job by Ellerby. Watch this pass by White. Right over to DuPont for his second of the game. And then it's the Darren Helm show. Beats Romanov to the puck. Boychek picks up the goal. And then Helm with an unbelievable rush. Maybe the best goal this series has ever seen. As he continues with the patience and goes right to the backhand to bury it. Capping five straight unanswered goals by the WHL All-Stars. The second period scoring summary is brought to you by Vaughn, where performance meets protection. Franson with his first, DuPont a deuce, and Boychuk chipping in with his first of the series, Darren Helm. He too as well with a goal and an assist in that period. Boy, the way Brody DuPont has played and performed in Calgary. Who I knows? Mean, I mean, that forward list, that is really, really difficult to pick. It is not hard to pick out championship banners in Kamloops. Why? There are a ton of them.
Welcome back to Kamloops, British Columbia, and the final period of this year's ADT Canada Russia Challenge. The Western Hockey League stars leading 5 1. Have Jenny Papikin has watched his team lose five in a row, and he will be six in a row, barring a mini miracle here in the third period. But I will say this. I give these young men from Russia a lot of credit. They've been put in a very adverse situation. 16 skaters. They did get some help from a number of pretty good players in the Quebec League, depleted by a couple of suspensions after game four to a total of 14 skaters, 15 tonight. And they've really, really tried their best. But you know what? Sorry. This group doesn't even come close to stacking up to the three teams across this country. And, you know, I have to say, I'm very disappointed that the Russian Federation has not taken this challenge more seriously in its four years because had they supplied each year four or five world junior class players, this could have been something that was very, very special and would carry on for Lord only knows who, how long. And now I think they really have to take a serious look at deciding on whether this should continue next year. It's a cloud of secrecy. It's almost like it's 1972 again. Franson snapped one, but the highlight has been for me just the celebration of the great talent in the Canadian Hockey League of Canadian players. It, it really has been a treat to watch from one end to the other. Speaking of that, how about the top scorers? I mean, well, you know who they're brought to you by. Boston Pizza, where you're among friends. Follow friends. Martin Hansel leading the way for Red Deer with 44 points. Uh, Cody Berkey just behind him. Maxwell on that list. Ryan White, Calgary Hitman, chipping in at the fifth spot with 36. There's another guy who wasn't on our list that might be close. He's 18. He'll have another opportunity next year. Well, Ryan White, who's a third round pick of the Montreal Canadiens in 2006. And there's another pick of the Montreal Canadiens, Gary Price. Maybe teammates in the future. Wouldn't be the least bit surprised. Wishart, Brock Nixon, and Zach Hamill with Ben Maxwell. Nikita Mikno. Plays it out to neutral ice. He's spent some time in his life in the Boston area. Well, Peter, if you look at Zach Hamill, we heard a lot about this guy last year. He plays for Everett and suffered through about a mono last year, so we didn't get to see him in a couple of games in which we thought we would, but we're getting that opportunity this year. There are a lot of subtleties in his game, according to Kevin Constantine. They really like the way his play he plays. He took some skating lessons from Derek Popey during the offseason. You can see that part of his game is really picked up, and he is one of the bright stars, one of many on a very good effort team. Did I mention that we were looking forward to that <laughs> January 21st matchup in Vancouver between the Giants and the Silver Tips? That should be a lot of fun. Yeah, we're looking forward to that one, and we'll have that for you right across the board on all our Rogers Sportsnet channels. January 21st at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. A lot of good games coming your way. And of course, We'll wrap it up one more time in Vancouver with the Memorial Cup. And they have already in Vancouver sold more than 13,000 ticket packages. That's, that's incredible. It is incredible. Already the most successful championship attendance wise, I believe, of all time. Well, it's gonna, there's no question. It's just going to be packed. Well, let's go down to Louis Jean. Well, thank you, Peter. I'm with Doug and Terry Russell. Proud parents of twins who are playing uh, well last night and now tonight. Ryan's the captain. Your uh, son uh, Chris was the captain la last night. Should we read it into uh, into this at all and, and perhaps think that they're going to be in Sweden? It'd be nice, but uh, it's a wait and see, and we go from there. You're telling me that they never played Triple A hockey? Uh, no, they didn't. They just played Double A in Innisfail, both uh, Bantam and Midget, and then went right to the Western League. Were they always a notch above the competition in their age group? I don't know if you'd say that. Uh, they, uh, they've worked hard at the game, worked hard in the summer. Uh, they enjoy the game, and I think that's why they've excelled. 
Have they talked at all about what it would mean to play for Canada at the World Juniors? Well, Chris played there last year, and, and Ryan would love to play there. And uh, he's just coming back after an injury, and hopefully he gets a shot. How about mom and dad? Would they go? Oh, yeah. They drove eight hours just to get here from uh, just outside Calgary, Peter. So obviously they're a dedicated parent, and we'll hopefully see them both in Sweden. Peter? Yeah, that would be fantastic. What a great story that would be if they both end up making the team. We, we know there's no shortage of reason for mom and dad to have their tickets booked in terms of one son. You know he's going to be back for sure. That's Chris. And you know I, I really like Ryan's game. He gives you a little of everything. As we take a look at Spencer Mahachek who maybe next year might be oh, yeah. really really in the thick of it for earning a berth to the Czech Republic. If he continues to, to progress the way we've seen I mean just in this game from what we saw in the Memorial Cup last year I like his chances for sure. He's been great here tonight. Here's Helm again towards Watt with Boychuk and both Helm and Boychuk with second period goals. Darren Helm. Prasturikov again. Wasn't sure. He's been in the oddest positions in goal at times. It's like he is so worn up out when he yeah. he goes down he can't get up again. Yeah he's going to need toothpicks for the eyes. He's tired. <laughs> oh, and who could blame him. Faced a lot of shots in his five games worth of work. Thank goodness they gave him last night off. It was fun to watch Bespal off playing. He was night. good. Very good. The reason the Russians stayed close in the game and lost 5 3. Helm helping Boychuk spring Ty Wisher. He shoots it into the corner. Off the bench comes Hamill, and the Western League will complete a line change. Scott Jackson looking for the deflection of Ben Maxwell. Crunch is Brock Nixon. That will result in a Russian penalty. Nearly four minutes into this third period. Well, Peter, the fatigue really starting to set in for the Russian selects player players right now. And Zuzan, the assistant captain, will go to the box. He and Brock Nixon getting tangled up in the half boards area. You see, it's just a little push from behind. And you hate to see those things happen. Zuzan did let up at the end, but at the same point, you know that's going to be a penalty each and every time you see it. Zuzan will go. If it is checking from behind, and I'm not sure it is, it will be accompanied by a 10 minute misconduct, but boarding is actually the call. And I, and I think it was called boarding for that very reason, because he let up at the last yeah. second. Had he went in there with more force, that would have been a checking from behind. You would have seen the misconduct and, and another player short uh, on the Russian selects bench. So I think a good discretion there. I agree, because he did hold, yeah. hold Brock Nixon up after he pushed him in. Power play for the Western Hockey League. Jackson with Ellerby, Maxwell, Nixon, and Ham. Jackson of the Seattle Thunderbirds has a pop over stick. He's a draft pick of St. Louis. There's Scott Jackson as Nixon steals. One of the few undrafted players, at least few players that aren't eligible for the first time he was eligible a year ago was not selected. And you never give up hope if you're one of those players because you've seen it so many times before. I can think of Ryan Wilson, the defenseman in Sarnia. And even if you don't get drafted the second time around, there's still that opportunity to sign as a free agent. Hamill. Block keeps going. Nobody home for the pass. It's how busy has Priskirikov been, according to Mr. Carruthers, our statistician? He's stopped 162 of 186. That was as a right this set. Brian Russell nearly got loose. Has it again. The New York Rangers draft pick is Ryan Russell. Surveying the situation. Dishes for Drizanovic. Saw a little opening on the far side. Shot him off. And again, the Russian selection not falling for the old switch positions in the exchange that time around by the WHL All Stars. Yeah, Mickelson found himself way up in the corner. As Franson will lead the breakout. Head up. Zip. Setaguchi. 
on the cycle for his Prince George teammate Drzenovic. You hear Nick yelling for that pass. Good communication. Drzenovic. Russell. Power play has expired. Krovkin. Well, the Medicine Hat Tigers upended by Ryan Russell. And Krovkin goes right back at him. Has not played a lot, but they could use the help in terms of bodies. Yeah, these guys are like Jackson Brown right now. They're running on empty. Brody Dupont with a pair of goals in the game, throwing his weight into Stanislav Romanov. Zuzer. Penalty expired. Back out there. Stick handling. Chevelle fans on a wrist. And Wishart clears. Not out. The Russians actually opened the scoring back in the first period on a goal by Kiryokin. His third of the challenge. Chevelle. Susan will deflect it into the zone. Nice turn by Ellington. For Wisher. Boyshuk with White and Mahachek now. Nice pass. He just joined the play on the part of the WHL All Stars right now. Ryan Russell upends Mr. Provkin. The next edition of Sportsnet News on Rogers Sportsnet Pacific comes your way with the dandy one, Don Taylor. He'll focus on the Vancouver Canucks highlights and lots of post-game reaction, nine other national accolade games. And will also feature the best finishes of the week. Five to one, four goals in the second period by the Western Hockey League. Zach Boychuk in a race with Chevelle. Well, has played a lot of hockey the last two nights. And in the series period, Wisher. Skirikov calmly directs it out of harm's way. Working down low again is Helm. Has a goal and an assist. Boychuk chopped away from him. Look at Helm, first guy back, too. Boychuk. Banks it. Helm will work one on one. Now one on two. Snaps it. Looking to go top shelf. Does the medicine add Tiger? He never stops this guy. Undrafted in the Western Hockey League here's Darren Helm. Good find. Good find indeed. He's playing junior B hockey in Selkirk a couple of years ago when they found him. Worked out pretty well. In his second. ADT Canada Russia challenge. Brock Nixon stopped up by Zacha Peko. Slide it right to Kerry Price. Jackson slides it ahead for Kootenai Ice. Ben Maxwell. Maxwell behind the net to Brock Nixon. Looking for the return is Maxwell. Nixon avoids a check. Nixon is shot. For Skirikov, just enough to keep it out. He was deep in the net. Shot number 32 of the game for the Western Hockey League side. Tikhanov attempts to chop it out. Couldn't. Another chance to clear finds Anchepeko and Nala. Nicholson. Nice move at the line by Mickelson. Finds Hamill. Hamill. In front, another chance. Moving up on the plate for Zenovic, and he shot a wide. Good puck movement. Not quite the finish the Western Hockey League would have liked. As the Russians send it right to Kerry Price. And he'll the shot. There's how well he can play the puck. Drzenovic puts on the brakes and shoots it. And Braskirikov takes care of a close in rebound. Well, a couple of good chances for the WHL All-Stars. Mickelson makes the Russian selects look like the Keystone Cops and puts a perfect pass on Hamill's stick. Hamill probably should have shot there. Instead, he was looking to make the pretty play to Nixon, and then it didn't work out. And then Drzenovic off the pass from Carey Price. What a laser, and he put it right on his tape. Ryan Russell on the cycle. Drzenovic and Setaguchi with Prince George, his line mates. Devin Setaguchi acquired just prior to the start of the season 
for the Saskatoon Blades, or at least when he was ready to come back, hampered by an off-season leg injury that forced him to miss the San Jose camp. He's just working out too much and too hard. Here he is. Sataguchi dishes Wishart in front. Scores! Great passing finished off by Ryan Russell. Well, Devin Sataguchi, Peter, has been so good along the boards, but here it's his patience and his ability to cut laterally to wait for the trailer that forces this to be a goal. Russell is the beneficiary of a great pass, but watch what Setaguchi does here. As soon as he grabs this puck, he'll go laterally, wait for the trailer, wait for the trailer, then send it back, and now this is a pass. It's not a shot, folks. Right on Russell's tape, and it's buried from there. Wishart, Russell, little tip, good goal. Pretty to watch. And it's six to one. Here's DuPont, he has a pair on the contest. Back out with Mahachek and Ryan White. White is DuPont's Calgary teammate. Mahachek bumped off the puck by Osipov. DuPont carries on, he's been impressive. Very good in this game. Swept in front, and Kazianov an opportunity to clear and does. Wishart and Setaguchi draw the assist of the goal by Ryan Russell. Kazianov just missed. On the short side, Milan Zorov, now Shapachev wanted number five of the challenge, and Price with a good six. Osipov, nice Pass. feed. Kazianov, a quick one-timer, upended in front, Milan Zorov, and that will result in a penalty. Ryan Russell has reason to smile after that goal. Keaton Ellerby is flagged for the hook. The Russian selects putting on some pressure. Emil of Zorov caught in right in front of the net, and you can see could have called that a hold, a trip, a hook, whatever it is, but it goes as a hook. Curtis Hunt will be one of the assistant coaches come time to go to Sweden on December 26th. He's been a rough couple of weeks stretch for him, and it doesn't get any easier as we move through Christmas. Fine young coach of the Regina Pats is Curtis Hunt. And he was a solid junior in Prince Albert in his day. Romanov on the Russian power play. Kiriokin, the lone goal of the night for the Russians, has the puck now with Kalyanin and Zuzin and offside. Well, the physical play continues uh, in this game. See Shavalov going into the corner. He knows that J.D. Watt is coming on him, but Watt has thrown his body around this entire game, Peter. And when you talk about role guys, neither you or I had him on uh, our list as far as the selection camp is concerned. But when you talk about role guys and you look at maybe a fourth line energy line that maybe plays two, three shifts in a period, he's a guy that may be eligible for that because of his physical play. He's come a long way. He sure I has. notice it, and I liked him a lot last year at the Memorial Cup. But he, his game's taken on a new level. It really has. If this is any indication, and I think it is. Ooh, right, he's off the end boards. Or hope you're okay, son. He really went down awkwardly. Then got up though. That was good. And this will be icing. And the faceoff will come back deep in Russian territory. Yes. I think Shapachev comes through the crease here and he drags his stick right under Carey Price as he tries to get up and he continues to bring him with him there. It was Shapachev's stick and Price's skate that got tangled up together and Shapachev continued to drag Price along and upended him. Yeah, that looked dangerous too. Thank it goodness. did, just kind of the way the knee kicked out. Mm -hmm. But again, there was no malice on the part of Shapachev. He was just trying to drag his stick and get it to the puck. Brock Nixon shot deflected high and out of play. Well, you see Price, maybe all that stretching that he does between whistles has really served him well there when he made that fall because he knows he's not getting a ton of work through the, well, the midway part of that second period and not too much work here early in the third. And so he's had to stretch in order to keep loose in between whistles. Won a gold medal as the starting goaltender at the Junior World Cup tournament in August. In 2004, was a silver medalist in the Canadian team at the 2005 World Under-18 Championship when Canada lost to Phil Kessel in the United States, 5-1 in the final. Hoping 
to don the Maple Leaf one more time in the big one, the World Junior Team. That stuff always helps you out. Any chance you get to play internationally always serves you well when it comes time for the big show like it is now. Romana blocked by Drzenovic and Drzenovic swept it out. That's a hard working play by Drzenovic. The thing is there, he oftentimes will just continue to skate. Rather, he stopped, swung his stick, and cleared the zone. Branson above, but carrying on is Ashtapeko. Good play to the line. Beacon up, Wellington. Aggressive. And now Ryan Russell, who scored a beauty on a great three way passing play, racing into the zone. Russell dropped it off Chevelle at Praskurikov. Boy, he dealt with those two skate deflections pretty well. Good chance here by Russell. Russell realizes that he's got an option there with Drzevinovic on the drop. He thought he'd draw the defender even lower and then send it back. But by that time, all the traffic had created in front of the net and the skate stopped that pass from getting back to Drzevinovic. But good recognition on the part of Russell. You know, moving forward, it probably says something that they put the C on Ryan Russell for this game. And in talking to Curtis Hunt, and I know Louis Jean explored this issue just before the start of the game. Not only is the coaching staff and scouting staff of Team Canada watching play on the ice, which is obviously the most important thing, but they're really interested on how these young men carry themselves in team functions, you know, in the dressing room, how they dress, how they, you know, it's, it's a big part of trying to put together a team. Because let's remember, we're not necessarily looking in, in the end of the day for the 22 best players necessarily, but the 22 who will make up the best team. The 22 that fit best together. And, and I really have a lot of appreciation for coaches that do that. I think too often that goes overlooked, Peter. Susan flips it and nearly found the top part of the goal. Good burst from Dimitri Susan. So he was shaken up earlier in the game, but Looks like he's fine. There goes Watt again. And the whole process and the evaluating and the hard work and the great players. It's a tough job to come up with, you know, just the camp list is Ellington. Look, I almost have to laugh. I'm not laughing at that high stick. But did you see Mila Zorov's reaction? <laughs> sure did. To almost getting clobbered? J.D. Watt. Well, he doesn't mind throwing his weight around. The game review is brought to you by Castrol GTX High Mileage. It does help older cars feel young again. Just their third lead the Russian selects have had in this series, and they had it for 9 minutes and 48 seconds. And then the WHL really took off, scored six unanswered. A couple of WHL stars with two points apiece. Bit of a mugging here on the part of Kazianov. He swings that the was stick. Well, that's here than I thought, that's, actually. It's lazy and tired. I mean, it, it's, a, it's both of those things. There is no way the Russians should have ever come to Canada without a full lineup of at least 18 skaters. Well, at least. And I think Minimum. at that point, you have to bring extras. I mean, it, it's tough. The travel's tough. I mean, we do the travel as easy as possible. And I still, by the end of the series, find myself to be fatigued. And these guys are doing it in a bus. Even today, they get in here a lot later than they would have liked to because of weather conditions. It's not easy. The net is Kamloops Blazers Brock Nixon and the hometown crowd would love to see him turn on the red light. He's, he's played pretty well. He sure has and Shavala gives him the business there right at the side of the net. It's the first time we've seen the net come off here. Franson will send it down low and then everyone collapses towards the net. Shavala <laughs> knocks Nixon right into that post a little slow to get up but he has played very well in front of the hometown crowd here tonight. Well done. Good for you. Great to see players like that who really have started to come into their own in the Canadian Hockey League get a chance to play international. That is just fantastic. He'll, he'll never forget this night, Brock Nix, nor should he. 
Brody DuPont will have fond memories. He has a couple of goals and would love the hat trick. Yeah, and he is trying hard to get that hat trick. I like his game here tonight. A lot of these guys have really, they got off to a bit of a slow start, but they have really picked it up since. And if you look at DuPont, how about the work by Mahachek to get things going here to spring DuPont, who's light and quick release, breeds for Skirikov, and then he's the recipient of an absolutely gorgeous pass from Ryan White. Ryan White. Ellington. Now the power play. Here's White. Smart player. And he is rewarded for being in the right spot. Is the Calgary Hitman forward? Ryan White. And it's 7 1. Good reaction on the part of White. He just threw up his hand and said, Hey, I had no choice but to bury it there. Sorry, boys. I wanted to make a pass, but it was right there for me, and it was right on his tape. He and DuPont have worked very well together and they play together during the regular season. It comes off of uh, Milov Zorov skate right onto White. DuPont takes the shot. See it off the skate there and then you know you're in that area right between the hash marks and you have no choice but to bury it. Good job by Ryan White to finish it off. You know I had an opportunity last year to sit with Ryan White on the airplane and for a youngster who is you know in his second year in the league at that time. He's really a student of the game. I asked him about a lot of different players he played against, and he had a real, real in depth opinion on a lot of players. And He's a character, too. You know, you don't always find that anymore. You know, a lot of these youngsters, they play the game, they focus, they go do their job every day, but, you know, you sometimes wonder. They got a lot of things going on of how much of the other teams and, you know, outside of studying game films, but I, I really enjoyed my visits with Ryan White. We got a chance to catch up with him later in the dressing room with the top prospects, and uh, he's one of those guys that you could see would do a good job of keeping the room loose. He, he is a character, no question about it. Drzenovic on Prskirikov is White, the fifth leading scorer in the Western Hockey League this year with 35 points from Dupont and Ellington at 15-52, and that was a power play goal. Mr. Jean. Peter, you know my guest very well. Sheldon Ferguson of the Carolina Hurricanes, director of uh, amateur scouting. And uh, boy, do you miss this at all? Because you were a big part of our successes in the set in the 90s. Yeah, it sure brings back a lot of great memories working with Marie Costello and Bob Bob Nicholson and Dave Branch and Eddie Schnuth at the CHL. And uh, it was a lot of fun talking with Donnie Hay. We won together in 95 in Red Deer. And it's a great time of year for Canada getting ready for the World Junior. Can you evaluate anything in these games when it's so lopsided? I mean, is there any good that can come out of this? Well, I spoke with Jimmy Hammett, and I think uh, what it does, Louis, it gives the coaches an opportunity to see the kids in a game situation. There's no question that the uh, competition has been a little inferior, but uh, they see the kids in the game situation. They get to know them on the bench a little bit, and uh, I, I certainly think that it's been good over the last few years, and and uh, obviously we've won the gold medal, I think, the last couple years now, so uh, it's working again for them, and uh, they're going to be in good shape this year in Sweden. You're with the uh, defending Stanley Cup champion, Carolina Hurricanes. What are you looking for to repeat? <laughs> well, you know, it's... Uh, it looks like just uh, try to make the playoffs and then it's uh, wide open uh, for anyone. We just had a great time last year and uh, and uh, hopefully uh, you know it's it's tough to repeat but uh, you know things are going all right. Thank you. Well thanks for your time and congratulations. Yeah nice thanks. Lee. Thanks Lee. Good. Peter. One of the good ones Sheldon Ferguson what a job he did in Jim Hammett's role back in the 90s. What a slash there by Kelly on and he goes to the box throws up his hands afterwards but uh, yeah you know we've talked about it a couple of times here in this third period these guys are just so tired and, and I think frustrated too it's tough to, to go into different buildings and to continuously get beat. I mean these kids are they know what's going on. They know they can't compete, and that's not easy. That's night not after easy. night after night after night. Nixon! Hamill to the front of the net. How'd that stay out? It hit the post. Great hand-eye coordination from Zach Hamill. Flipped it, banged it, and then doink. He was trying to hit fungos. Ball coach. Ellerby with a nice stride into the zone for Ben Maxwell. The fans that remain are chanting, let's go Canada. 
and good on them to sit back and appreciate the great young talent in this country. A lot of these guys work on this sort of thing just fooling around after practice. Well this puck comes right up onto Hamill's stick. He taps up in the air and then whacks it. Holy geez that's great hand eye coordination. Yeah, we've coordination. seen a couple of great goals in this game and that might have taught both. Tough night to pick the play of the game. 7 1. The weaning moments of this ADT Canada Russia challenge. DuPont, could it be three? Could it be three? They might go upstairs. Good job right away by the referees to say, hey, wait a second, hold the phone here. Kyle Raymond coming over. Kyle Raymond officiated the Memorial Cup final last year, if my memory serves me correctly. Yes, he did. Now, Ryan White never touched this puck, and it actually goes off Proskurikov and in. That will be a goal, Peter. Well, that should count. Yeah, it will. See, Ryan White tried to tap it here, but he didn't get any part of it. And so that indeed will be a goal. Well, let's take another look here. It's very close. Does he touch that or not? No, not, not, not even close. No, it isn't, no. especially from that angle. No. That'll be a goal without a doubt. And it should go to Mr. DuPont. It will go to DuPont. Not? And they yeah. will point to center. There it is. Yeah. And the hat trick for Brody DuPont and the Calgary Hitman. What a great job by the crew just to pick that up. No problem at all. Well, and thanks to our crews right across the country. What a great job they've done. Great professionals that we have an opportunity to work with game in and game out. And you really, really see it when you go across the nation on our tour like the one we're about to complete in a minute and 23. So good at times they almost make me look good. Well, you'd have to have a heck of a Tough camera. task. You'd have to have a heck of a camera for me, <laughs> I can tell you that. Thanks a lot, guys and gals. In the truck. Fine job. DuPont, third of the game on the power play, no assists. With the exception of the glass at the end of the room. And now we await the announcement to see who will have an opportunity to try out in Calgary starting on the 10th of December. And boy, will that be a battle, especially up front. Well, if you're in the Calgary area and they open up any of those practices, and they do, get there. Or the inner squad games be well worth your while at the Father David Bauer Arena. Three games, two inner squad games, the evenings of the 12th and 13th, and then they'll play a CIS All-Star team on the 14th before picking the team the morning of the 15th. Darren Helm, what a goal he scored in the second period. Zach Boychuk went to the net there and kind of took a hack of Proskurikov afterwards, but these young men have acquitted themselves very well for the Western Hockey League here tonight. Eight unanswered after the Russians took the lead in that first period, held that lead for almost a half a period, and then the boys really started to get their act together and from there on out. It's been a tough night for the Russian selects. Bring out the brooms again. It's a Canadian sweep of the Russians. Well Peter I have to tell you I enjoyed uh, the series. We saw a couple of close games a couple of four three games one in Quebec one in Ontario and by the time these guys were able to get to the Western Hockey League and especially in tonight's game the fatigue and the lack of roster really took its effect here tonight. Will there be another ADT Canada Russia challenge. If there is, I don't think it's going to involve the Russian selects. Carey Price allowed the first goal of the game, but shut the door from there on and stopped 22 of 23. The Western Hockey League side fired 45 in the direction of Ilya Proskurikov. And Proskurikov, I think, has made a bid to certainly be on the team in Sweden. I don't know if he'll be the starter. Semen Varlamov who we saw in this challenge one year ago I think would be the odds on favorite to be the starter but I don't think Mr. Proskurikov has hurt his chances. 
Well, Peter, if you look at the Russian Selects team, I, I would guess you could see as many as six guys that will play uh, and represent Russia come December 26th. Well, let's find out who the players of the game are. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, would you please welcome Mr. Michael Collins to present tonight's player of the game for Team Russia and Team WHL. Tonight's player of the game for Team Russia is number one, Ilya Prostryakov. And tonight's player of the game for Team WHL is number nine, Brody Dupont. Brody DuPont deserving of player of the game honors as was Mr. Proskuryakov. He might sleep for two straight weeks. <laughs> yeah, he might. He was tested often and was the player of the game in all but one of the games in which he started. He faced 201 shots in five games. Ouch. That's a boatload of rubber. I don't leave a mark. The traditional several <laughs> traditional handshake and our congratulations to all the players who participated in this event and we look forward to watching many of them from both teams in the upcoming World Junior Championship as Canada goes in search of a three peat after beating the Russians in the last two consecutive gold medal games by a count of 11 to 1. Oh man that is going to be one tough job for Hockey Canada for Craig Hartsburg for Curtis Hunt for Clem Jodouin to try and narrow this team down. Once the selection camp gets started. Not an easy task and that's the way it should be that speaks volumes of what great talent there is in this country and we bring back our Louis Jean who's with a pretty talented young man. Pretty talented indeed and he was the star of tonight's contest no doubt about that three goals one assist. Did you have a feeling before the game you were going to have a good one. <laughs> uh, I don't know in practice my legs felt good. I mean uh, just want to come over and have as much fun as I can and you know I got a few breaks played with some great players and uh, you know just had some pucks fortunately going. Obviously as you know uh, it's going to be pretty difficult with the, all the forwards right now that are, that are in the mix. But do you think that you certainly opened some eyes tonight. Uh, I hope so. I mean uh, I would love to go uh, trial for a world junior team and uh, you know if, if I didn't I mean it wouldn't be that that big of a disappointment. But uh, sometimes it's the right time right player type thing. So but I definitely like to get an invite and uh, get a, my crack at it. I mean I love to represent my country and go to Sweden. The invites come out on Monday. Are you going to be able to sleep the next few days. Uh, I didn't know they come on Monday to be honest but uh, now that you told me if I won't sleep but uh, oh, whatever happens happens. Uh, I got a three and three with my team so uh, I better get some sleep because uh, it's going to be some tough hockey coming up. You're eighth in the league in scoring right now. Uh, tell me about how the season has been going for you with the hit. Uh, it's been going really well. I think we're just a year older a little more mature and uh, it's a lot easier to get around uh, playing with great players play with uh, Ryan White like I played with him tonight set me up for uh, my second goal and it's been like that all year. I mean he he loves to pass and I love to shoot so we're a great combo and uh, you know it's, it's been going good so hopefully I can keep it going and uh, make sure our team goes as far as we can this year. Well, we wish you the best of luck. All right. Thanks a lot. Peter send it back up to you now. Louie thanks so much Brody DuPont as we check in on just one of the banners here at the Interior Center. The play of the game brought to you by Acklands Granger Canada's leading distributor of industrial fleet and safety supplies and this is a gem. The finest goal in this series but maybe in the entire four years of this series. Darren Helm inside out to the backhand to beat Proskurikov. Definitely worthy of a second look. Great speed good stick handling and tremendous finish. Darren Helm of the Medicine Hat Tigers, one of the best teams in the Western Hockey League and all of Canada. The ADT Canada Russia Challenge has come to an end for another year. We'll wrap it up when we return to Camp Luce. The ADT Canada Russia Challenge 2006 on Rogers Sportsnet. Brought to you by MasterCard. 
There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Coming up on Rogers Sportsnet Ontario, Ontario Hockey League action. It's John Tavares and the Oshawa Generals taking on a talented Kingston Frontenac bunch. We'll have that for you at 7 Eastern and 4 Pacific. The next edition of Sportsnet News Pacific coming your way with the one and only Don Taylor. Oh, he's a popular man in these parts, and for good reason. There are the items that he will be focusing in on on the program. For another year, the fine young men from Canada dominate and sweep the Russians in the ADT Canada-Russia Challenge. It has been a lot of fun watching, in particular, the great young talent across our country. And the Russians know all about it because they did not find it very easy. For Sam Cosentino and Louis Jean and our entire crew, hope you enjoyed it. We'll send it to Greg Ross in the Sportsnet Studios.